Good evening class. I am talking about the Battle of Kings Mountain again today. Um, this was obviously what my video was on last week as well, um, but since this is what my final project is on, I have to kind of go through it again. So I'll try to keep it brief and not hit some of the things that I uh, touched on last week, but it's actually very fitting to be doing this video today because this is the anniversary of the battle. It took place on October 7th in 1780. And basically from the research that I've done and things that I've put together so far, um, essentially the battle was, came at a time in the revolution um, in the Southern campaigns where Cornwallis and um, Henry Clinton and the British command had focused their efforts in North Carolina and were looking to push further into South Carolina. Earlier into 1780, they had already taken Charleston. They had won the Battle of Camden and they were continuing to push into the further into the interior of the Carolinas and had their sights set on the South Carolina backcountry. One reason for this was they knew that they could gain loyal loyalist support in the Carolina, specifically in South Carolina, at least they thought. They felt like they had strong support there for their efforts and they knew that it was the weaker part of the Continental Army and the weaker, weaker area that they felt like would be easy to take and easy to continue to push forth to gain more territory. So one of the things that stood out to me was early in 1780, General Washington actually sent a letter to Congress, and this is something that I talk about in my presentation, basically urging Congress for help in the South because he knew where the weaknesses were. He could tell the writing was on the wall basically that the weaknesses were in the South. He knew that they had loyalist support there and they didn't have the money, they didn't have the supplies or the men to really do anything on his own and needed the support of Congress and needed the support of those um, who were in charge of our government. And so he makes this appeal in April of 1780 and then over the course of several months leading up to the battle in October, there are just several events that unfold. So one of the things that stands out about this battle in particular are is the fact that the British were very convinced that they had strong support in this southern region. Um, and like I stated, and as Washington stated in his letter, they knew that this was a weaker part of the army, a weaker part of the campaign, I guess, for America. And so they began to dispatch um, scouts, if you will, or more loyalist, Tory loyalists, excuse me, um, to kind of scope out the area, one of which was Major Patrick Ferguson. And th from intelligence gathered on both sides of this event, on the side of the Americans and on the side of the British, they were met with the information that there was infighting and division amongst, amongst the American forces in the South. They had dividing lines on those that believed in rebellion, believed in the fight for America, and those that were still loyal to the British Crown. And so when gathering intelligence and putting together a plan for pushing further into the Southern region and into South Carolina, um, I think the British began to become uh, experienced with or familiar with the fact that their loyalties in this area were not as strong as they felt. And one, one of the things that I, one of the resources I'm using is a, uh, a book put together by Bannister Tarl Tarleston where he goes, Tarleton, excuse me, that where he goes through all of the events of the Southern campaigns of the 1780 and 1781. And he mentioned specifically in the late 1780 campaign in the South about how Cornwallis's bravado was so distinct that it pushed further into, into everything that happened in this time, specifically into Ferguson's campaign and his work in trying to scope out the backcountry of South Carolina. So much so that when they were met with this intelligence, they were met with the fact that they were not gathering as much loyalty as they had thought it kind of took them by surprise, which is something that aided the Americans in winning the Battle of Kings Mountain. So fast forward to October, um, intelligence is gathered by a uh, colonial militia that Ferguson is making his way to the ridge line of a mountain area, mountainous area between North and South Carolina on the border. 
they gather militia um, from Virginia, North Carolina, parts of Eastern Tennessee, and begin to put preparations together to basically uh, head out Ferguson's forces. What they do is they come, they devise a plan to come from all four sides and meet him on the ridge of Kings Mountain. This obviously takes Ferguson by surprise. It takes the British forces by surprise because they are essentially trapped on the mountain and don't have anywhere to go to get out of the way of the colonial militia. They are forced further up the mountain, further up the ridge. Ferguson makes a daring um, plan to send himself and his men down the mountain to try to outgun the colonial militia that were pushing up the mountain. And he was essentially outgunned and killed on the spot with a range of bullets. And so what you see from this battle is a turning point in the American Revolution in favor of the Americans. Um, not only after this battle did Cornwallis begin to shift his focus from that of North Carolina and remove forces from North Carolina, um, the tide of the war completely changed. There were victorious battles that took place after the 1780 uh, Battle of Kings Mountain. There, were, um, a, there was a morale boost and more of a push for loyalty to the American forces and the American cause for independence that wasn't there before. And uh, the morale boost and the strength that was gained from this battle truly aided in helping the Americans win this war. And so um, it's a really important battle. It's really crucial. It was, it was only lasted 65 minutes and um, there weren't very many casualties on the side of the Americans and so they left feeling very victorious over what they had done and what they had accomplished and it was truly a turning point in the revolution as a whole. And so kind of in putting all of that together, I'm trying to focus my efforts in really retelling the story of that battle as well as highlighting what was taking place specifically in the southern campaigns of 1780. Um, prior to this battle and then the battle and then what took place directly after in the southern regions and how that impacted the American Revolution as a whole and so I'm going to be visiting the battle this week to or the battlefield I'm sorry this week to uh, get some video and put some things together to kind of see from both sides what that might have looked like for both the British and the American forces and the locations and terrain they encountered while actually taking place in this battle and so I'm excited about that and just excited to kind of retell and so I'm hoping that all of that is going to come together and obviously as everyone else I will list the sources and things if anyone's interested um, and kind of go through what I've already talked about and um, what I am hoping to accomplish with this project. So hope everyone has a great night.